It's called Going Green Solutions. You could call it an eco store and the purpose of it is to help individuals, businesses, organisations find more sustainable ways to live or work. We wanted to source a whole heap of products that were kind of on the environment, whether they're reusable, recyclable, recycled, grey water friendly, biodegradable, compostable, etc. It's a whole heap of processes, yeah. You try to use things that are kinder on the environment, you try to use less energy, you try to use more efficient energy. Our focus has always been on really practical products that people um, can use to replace conventional ones. It's things like toilet paper, cleaning products, nappies, things that you actually can't not have. And so if you can make a greener choice, it makes a big difference. There's myself and Lucinda who are the owners also working in and on the business. And then there's Hannah and Michelle who are both in sales and admin. We're always happy for them to say things, to put their thoughts forward. And yeah, if it seems like it'll work, we'll try it. It was actually Michelle that said we should get up those blinds on the western windows. We'd talked about it before, but she's been really following that up and reminding us, you know, get some bamboo blinds. Turning off the hot water system costed nothing. We just turned it off and didn't use it anymore. An electric hot water storage system um, is on all the time and it's heating the water every day. We really only needed cups of tea and there's only a few of us to wash the dishes, so we decided to get a really energy efficient kettle and do that, and I think we would have saved a lot by doing that. We've installed standby power controllers that, and they go to every printer and computer over the shop so at the end of the day we turn that off and we know nothing's on standby power. That is a small cost but really these days you can get standby power controllers for not very much. Well the one we have is called an effigy power monitor. There are a few different brands on the market and it clips straight onto the mains leads. You need an electrician to do it but it's quite an easy job and then it gives you a moment by moment readout of how much energy is being used. So you can watch it yourself but also you can download the data onto a computer and compare week by week, month by month, year by year. We got rid of our really big fridge that we weren't using much and we got a second hand bar fridge and gave the old big one to the op shop. We went out and had a look at the most energy efficient heaters you could get and it made a lot of sense to switch it over. It was a fraction of the gas use. With any type of heating or cooling, it makes perfect sense to turn it off half an hour before you actually leave because the heat or the cool air will stay there for that long. So we've got a reminder that pops up on our computers half an hour before we close every day saying, remember to turn the gas heater off. <laughs> and it means there's no chance of us leaving it on for the whole night as well. Just thinking smart, you know, like the hot water system was a really obvious one and then the power saving switches where you turn the power off every night when you're not here for over 12 hours every night or more. Uh, laptops are more energy efficient so if there's a choice between the two I'd always go for a laptop. But in summer we close up the doors first thing in the morning. Once we have our blinds on the west facing windows that will make a big difference and we have fans. We have a ceiling fan and just personal fans. For us it was really important to, um, to work where we lived, it meant we could only have one car, we share the car between the business and us. It means there's just so much less running around, less petrol, less time taken, so for us it's a great benefit to be here. The aim for me is to show people how easy it is to improve the energy efficiency of their homes. Often people only call an assessor when they get a horrendously huge bill, like $1,500 for a quarter. The cost of getting an energy assessor, or probably of undertaking the work yourself, might be a few hundred dollars, but it is very likely that you could save that amount back and then every quarter thereafter, just by making some minor adjustments. There are lots of really good sites online that have free energy assessing tools to help you analyse bills to show whether there's seasonal fluctuations and what might be causing different energy use. I pay the bills so I notice them and I noticed for example that um, during summer when we're not using our gas heater our energy bills um, go down by about three kilowatts a day which I thought was quite remarkable so that must be for the fan for the heater. We get accredited green power. It means that it has been created with renewable energies. On our electricity bills, where it shows the carbon emissions for that quarter, it's always zero. It's just habits. You know, you form a habit to be that way and it becomes a part of how you are and who you are. It saves energy and it saves resources and it saves cash. 
which is the first thing that a lot of people think of, but for me it's about the, the other two and helping provide for the future for everybody. There are so, so many things you can do without any cost. And it's estimated that about 70% of reduction in bills for a household is just purely by behavioural changes. And I think the same for workplaces.